Detroit done three and three. Welcome back. Steve here flying solo. Unfortunately, Will is working. Andy's a little under the weather. So um, I, I got to rock a solo out today. Before I get into it, you know, when you see me, you see Will, you see both of us, you know what we're going to be talking, some Detroit Lions football. So if that's your cup of tea, if that's what you enjoy, hit that subscribe button. It is truly greatly appreciated. We're trying to grow this thing. We need you guys to help us out. Um, real quick, got to give a shout out to those Oakland Bears, Golden Bears yesterday for beating Kentucky. Uh, knocking off the Wildcats, local team, um, going on a deep run. Now, listen, I'm not an overly huge college football or a college basketball fan. I, I really don't enjoy college basketball. I don't really follow the – I mean, I love the Pistons, but come on, I, I can't watch those guys right now. Um, so I don't overly love college basketball. I usually always fill out a bracket. I did not this year, and it's a good thing because every time I do, I pick Kentucky to go on a deep, deep run. Um, I have some – some ties to the university of Kentucky, some friends who went there. Uh, my best friend, army roommate uh, lives down there. He took me to my first Kentucky basketball game like five, six years ago. Um, so I was my first college basketball game. They actually lost. And I was told by an old lady not to ever come back. So maybe I jinxed the team that day. I'm not sure, but I'm glad I didn't fill out a bracket because I probably would have picked Kentucky to win it all. And I would be absolutely effed right now if I did. So Shout out to Oakland. I'm cheering for you the rest of the way. Uh, let's see this Cinderella story get to a final four. I'm pulling for him now, even though Kentucky's out, um, but it's okay. And Michigan didn't make it. So I really don't really have anything to cheer for other than Oakland. Um, I got to give a shout out this episode. Uh, I can't steal the thunder is from Dave Burkett. Um, if you guys don't know who Dave Burkett is, Detroit free press covers the Detroit lions usually has some fantastic ideas. I saw something he put on Twitter today about um, some quarterbacks that the Detroit lions could be targeting with, the news of Cam Sutton and him not being on the team anymore. So shout out to Dave Burkett. This was not my, um, not my idea. I'm just kind of going over it and giving my opinion. So what he did, um, I saw it on Twitter. Um, if you guys don't follow him, give him a follow. I don't know him personally. I'd love to have him on. I think he's a fantastic beat writer. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I like Dave. I'll leave it at that. I don't like some other Detroit media, but I love Dave Burkett. So he put out something today with the Detroit lions targeting another cornerback via trade or free agency. Um, he lifted, he listed five names. Um, these are names you guys have probably all heard of if you're a big NFL fan. Um, obviously, number one was Legereus Sneed. We have talked about Legereus Sneed heavily. We kind of put it to bed when we signed um, Amik Robertson and, and traded for Carlton Davis. I thought the Legereus Sneed talks was, was dead. Boom. Out of nowhere, Cam Sutton, his thing, whatever's going on. I'm not going to touch that. I feel like there's something really weird going on with this Cam Sutton stuff and how they can't find him, how he's missing. Look, um, I'm not saying anyone wants to spend time in jail, but for this alleged crime, you know, Cam, I, I, I wish you would just turn yourself in, get it taken care of. You know, we're not talking like the rest of your life in jail, but um, him missing it, it, it just feels a little weird. And I hope I hope it's nothing bad. So I, I'm not going to go down that road. But like I said, luxurious need. We kind of we kind of killed that topic off. Thought that we were done really out of the cornerback market for a little while with our signings. Um, but here we are. Cam Sutton released by the Lions yesterday. So now here we are talking corners again. Legereus Sneed. I don't have an issue with how Legereus Sneed plays the game. I love his style. It would fit the Detroit Lions absolutely perfectly. Um, the, the thing is, we had, we had two third-round picks. Now we only have one. We gave one up for Carlton Davis who restructured his contract. So we got him for, I think, two more years. So I don't see us trading for Legereus Sneed because the asking price is too high. We talk, I talk about supply and demand. The Kansas City Chiefs now know that we're more in the market than we were just a few days ago. So they might that, that price tag might not be the same as what it was two or three days ago. But um, what are we going to give up for Legereus Sneed? A third round pick. So we really only get two picks in the first two rounds of the draft. And on top of that, you trade for LeJerry Sneed. He's on a one-year contract. He's franchise tagged. Is he a rental? Does he leave at the end of the year? Are you going to re-sign him and give him $20 million a year for three or four years? I, I, I don't think that's a road I want to go down. I don't want to give up draft assets and have to pay another mouth when I have Jared Goff's contract coming up, Amonra St. Brown's contract's coming up. I know there's been some rumors about that this offseason, but nothing's signed yet. We got Penny Sewell coming up, a Lee McNeil down the road, Aiden Hutchins. Like, well, there's a lot of guys who are going to need contracts later down the road. If you want to talk about keeping the core together, Legereus Needs going to take up some money. He's going to cost a draft pick. He's going to cost you at least twenty million dollars a year, at least minimum. That's probably rock bottom price for Legereus Need is twenty million. I think with the franchise tag, he's making just over nineteen. 
So he's going to want a long-term deal. He's going to want to be um, taken care of for the next three, three, maybe four years. So you guys, I love LeJarrius Sneed. It's nothing about him being as a player. It's purely from an aspect of the future. Do you want to give up a draft as asset and on top of that have to pay him when there's plenty of other people who are going to need contracts coming up? For me, I'm out. If he were a, a peer free agent, I would be giving him a open check. Um, obviously, we've signed some other people. So if this were like day one of free agency and he were truly a free agent, we'd be in a different ball uh, ballpark. But with our signings, I, I'm content with our secondary. I do think we need some depth. That's kind of why I'm talking about this. Next on Dave Burkett's list, he had Marshawn Lattimore for the uh, New Orleans Saints. I thought that was a little interesting because Marshawn Lattimore, um, pretty pretty solid corner. What What is he? Let me look at 27 years old right now. He'll be 28 when the season starts. Um, he's got some familiarity with, with Aaron Glenn from the New Orleans days. Um, some familiarity with Dan Campbell when he was there. So this is a guy that they know about, but the same thing going to have to trade for him. He's under contract for three more years. Um, so he, his, his future would be brighter because we at least have him for three more years where we don't have to pay him uh, or, or, or give him a raise or resign him or restructure anything. It's just, you, you trade for him. He's with you. He's on your team. Um, all is set in stone. My only question with Marshawn Lattimore is availability. Look, the last two seasons, he's only played 17 games. The NFL now, you play 17 games a season. So he's missed 50% of the games uh, the last two years. So that's a question. I don't know. Trade for a guy who's, who's maybe starting to show some injury concerns. I'm not overly worried about it, but it is something I have to address. You've missed 50% of your games the last two seasons. That's, you know, I don't know. It, 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 it's a little alarming. I'm not overly panicked or worried about it, but I do like Marshawn Lanimore. Um, I think he would be a phenomenal fit. I think he, him and Carlton Davis... Those would be two phenomenal corners to have on the outside. You throw in a Meek Robertson for some depth, some nickel, uh, some matchups here and there. You still got Brian Branch. Like our secondary would be more than fine. Question is, this is for you guys. This is questions for you guys. Would you be willing to trade for him? What would you have to give up? Leave it in the comments. Next, uh, the next three names are all kind of free agents. So no more trades. Uh, we, uh, we don't have to. I will throw in an honorable mention. That's kind of a trade. It is, it is a trade, actually. But the next three names, we got Xavier Howard. Look, this guy at one time was considered... Everyone was thinking he was going to be the next Daryl Revis, shutdown corner, four-time Pro Bowler. Then led the NFL with 10 interceptions in 2020, but then he literally just like fell off a cliff production-wise. Um, kind of got shifted to that number two corner last year when they traded for Jalen Ramsey. Um, if we could bring him in, on a, obviously these all, all three of these next guys are probably going to be one-year deals. You bring Xavier, Xavier Howard in on a one-year deal, I'm good with it. If the price is right, it's depth. We're not going to ask him to do too much. He's just kind of there for insurance just in case. Obviously, next name, you guys all know, Stephon Gilmore. His brother, Stephen Gilmore, plays for the Detroit Lions. Do we bring him in as a mentor role? Um, this guy was absolutely one of the lockdown corners not too long ago. Uh, defensive player of the year when he was with the New England Patriots. A little bit older. He's 34 years old. Is that a question or, or a concern for me? Listen, I, I've given my opinion on Stephon Gilmore. Um, I'm not, I wasn't overly in love with it. But now that we kind of need a corner and he can come in and maybe not be relied on as heavily, I'm all for Stephon Gilmore. I think he's a phenomenal player, uh, 34 years old, played very good last year when uh, when Diggs went down for the Dallas Cowboys. He stepped into a more important role, played very, very well. So I, I'm for Stephon Gilmore now. My mind has changed. You can change your mind in sports. You can have different opinions. They can, they can change depending on what's going on with the team. So Stephon Gilmore, absolutely. Next name, very familiar with this guy, former Tennessee Titan, Adore Jackson or Dory Jackson. Look, he's young. Let me see how old is Dory Jackson looking these days. How, 28. He'll be 29 right about when the season starts in early September. Um, listen, this guy's not a lockdown corner. He's not a lockdown. You can sign him to a one-year deal, maybe five, six million. He's on the bench. You throw him in there if someone goes down, gets hurt, tweaks something. I, I'm okay with Adoree Jackson in that capacity. Um, in Dave Burkett's article, he also kind of mentioned how he can be used in the return game. I don't think we would need him there. We have Khalif Raymond, who does phenomenal. Um, I don't like to be shuffling in and out uh, punt returners. I just like to have one guy back there I can trust. Adoree Jackson's 
serviceable, but I think Khalif Raymond is just, he, he's the guy. He's going to be the punt returner, the kick returner. Adore Jackson has fantastic speed. I can't remember what he ran at the combine back in 2017 when he was coming out, but I do know he was a blazer and he ran very, very well. I'd have to look that up. Um, I just did not have that in my notes for this episode, so I apologize. So Dory Jackson, I'm good with the Detroit Lions signing him. Like I said, if it's in a limited capacity where he's only coming into the game, um, if someone's kind of banged up, I don't think he's going to be a starter. Uh, same thing with Stefan Gilmore. Maybe he gets shuffled in a little bit more. Gilmore, that is, to, to pending on matchups. I still think he could play some ball. Uh, Dory Jackson, I think he could play ball too, but I don't know. My, that's just That's just kind of how I feel. I could be wrong. Not everyone's going to agree with that. So those are the five. There is a six name kind of floating out there that I've seen. It's kind of been a little quiet on the Twitter front lately, but um, Grant Newsome, cornerback for the Cleveland Browns, has kind of been a name that's been thrown out. Um, I saw something that Cleveland is having some cap issues. I'm not 100% 100 familiar with their cap situation. I saw that. I don't know if it's true, but I think that's why the uh, Cleveland Browns might be looking to trade him. Solid, solid young corner, but again, he's going to fall into that trade category. He's younger. He has some more, some years left on his contract, so he's kind of in that same. Uh, I put him in that same level as Marshawn Lattimore. You 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 trade for him, but you don't have to worry about that rental tag um, of just one year. You know, you have some years of control under his contract. So those are five names. Dave Burkett mentioned. I threw in Grant Newsom. Look, guys, we're not overly pressed for a corner, even with the Cam Sutton situation. Um, it sucks. I really, really loved that one day we had after we signed Kevin Zeitler. I said to myself, man, this is nice. The Detroit Lions going into the draft, we have a luxury now. We don't have any huge pressing needs. Go out in the draft, get an edge rusher, get an X receiver. We're good. Sit back, pop some beers with the boys. We don't have to worry about anything else on draft night um, or draft weekend. Next day, Cam Sutton, news breaks kind of in a different boat now. Now we kind of do need a corner. It's not overly pressing. We have two starters. We have uh, Carlton Davis and Meek Robertson. It's just kind of after those two guys, what do you really got? Will Harris? No, thank you. Kendall Vildor, not resigning him if my life depended on it. So I feel like we do need another corner, um, at least one more corner. I wouldn't be surprised if we got two more, just to, just to be sure. But those are six names that I threw out there, guys. So leave some comments down below. Um, hit that like button if you're new here. Like I said in the beginning, stick around, help us grow this thing. It's greatly appreciated. I will try to get with Will as soon as I can. Um, we'll get another episode out for you guys. Have a good Friday. Have a good weekend. Good luck in your brackets, man, because my, mine would be toast if I filled one out. So I'm kind of just sitting back, chilling, watching some basketball without any stress. Have a good weekend, guys. We'll be back later with some more content. Mm -hmm.